Hello everybody, welcome back. So I asked the opinion and um, the feedback of some of y'all who watched the previous video. It was mostly that the lighting was, um, you know, not pretty steady and the background was weird and I'm all stiff and I agree. But it's really weird talking to a camera. It's weird, okay? And it's still pretty new to me, so damn, I'm gonna get there. Just give me some slack. I even charged the battery of the camera and the ring light so it doesn't die midway. Progress? I think so. Today we're going to do a super quick and easy smoky eye in 10 minutes. I know a lot of us have to wake up early to be on, on time with classes in school, university, work, and uh, who doesn't love to sleep in? But you know, some days you want to look a little snacky, a little cutie patootie, so you can do both, just saying. And I'm going to show you today how to go from this to this. So just keep watching and I'll see you next time. First thing, if before you start, uh, remember to moisturize your hands every now and then because uh, depending on the season, we might have drier hands and if, if we remember to moisturize our face and neck, why leave the hands behind it? So getting that out of the way. For those of us who have drier skin, I really find uh, an eye base or an eye cream really helps uh, make the makeup more seamless and it flakes off much lesser, it doesn't irritate your skin and uh, everything blends so much smoother. So just use a little bit, just a dollop of eye cream before you put on your eyeshadow. And next, eye base. I'm using the MAC paint pot in the shade Painterly. I find that um, eye pig eyeshadow pigments, they're so much more vibrant and they blend so much better and they do last so much longer if you have a very tacky or um, a very nice base for it to uh, build up on. Uh, so I usually just have a thin layer of uh, eye primer before I go in with my eyeshadow. When you're in a time crunch, suppose you want to uh, do a eye look in the morning and you don't have the time and the luxury to take uh, one shadow and build it up to the intensity you want, you can easily go in with the eye base. I'm using a black eye base. You can use any one that you have. This really helps blend and uh, uh, it, ha it packs the pigment you put on top and it stays so much longer and it does it in much lesser time. So I'm going in with the black eye base first, blending that out. And then we're going to set it on top with uh, a dark eyeshadow. So with the eye base, uh, you want to use a little and you want to use it sparingly because um, it is creamy so it could go out of hand really fast. So just use the slightest amount in the central most part and pat it in place and spread it out evenly with your fingers. And now I'm going in with the second shade of this palette. It's a very beautiful um, burnt copper brownie gold shade and again you don't want to take it too high up when you're using dark colors you want to keep them uh saturated at the smallest the central most region of your eyelid so keep it low and pack it till you find that the intensity of the color is to your liking and after that i i bring it down on the lower lid as close to the lash line as i can just so i can blend it out later I'm using a, a purplish uh, burgundy color. This is called Empire. Uh, you can use any dark color you have. I find that black is a bit too harsh for the mornings. So I go in with a brown or a purple, something fun. And uh, I find that the Urban Decay 24 Glide On pencils, they really last so long. Uh, so I put that in my waterline and I will blend that out later. What I'm doing now is going in with the flesh tone transition shade. Uh, this is a beigey, it got out of hand a little in here, so I'm going with a big fluffy brush, which is clean. I'm just going over so I can diffuse the look a little more. So what you wanna do when you're using dark colors is you wanna use a transition shade that is uh, suitable for your skin. It might be a peachy one, a more brown, a nude, a beige. So find one and buff it in so there's no um, the sharp demarcation between your skin and the dark shadow. You want to make it a very seamless transition. 
You can also use the tip of your fingers because we have natural oils that will really make any eyeshadow go on so much more um, true to color, true to pan. So just using that to pack on a little more because I wanted maybe a bit more intensity. And again, going back in with the brush. And now since we're happy with the eye, we move to the face. Um, you need to have a, a base for anything to go on top of. Since we don't have much time today, we're not going to do the full glam. We're not going with the concealer, contour, uh, foundation. We're just using the smallest color correction to fix any flaws and even other skin tone. I'm also using a bit of uh, liquid highlighter because when I'm on days when I don't want to do too much, I feel that it looks very natural and glowy and very dewy and it doesn't look over the top. So just put that on the highest points of your face and blend it out. And I find that uh, it's a really uh, interesting, it's a really nice trick that you put your concealer on and if it's a very sheer one or if it's too creamy and liquidy, you just let it sit and dry for a few seconds, just 10 to 20 seconds. This really helps with increasing the opacity and the coverage of the same amount of concealer if you just blend it out right away. I used a bit of a contour stick just on the peripheries of the jawline and the cheekbones just the slightest bit so it's easy to blend but there's also a little bit of definition and dimension on the face and while that's drying I'm going in with a bit of blush as you can see I'm <laughs> looking a little clown like right there but it's um, it's a cream blush so you can be a little heavy-handed with this because it does wear off and look very natural once you're done at the end of the day it's not gonna look this intense in a few minutes it's gonna look actually pretty nor pretty natural it's gonna come together so that's why I like pick, uh, I prefer cream blush because it can be a bit more forgiving and you don't have to be super precise. I put a bit of more concealer in the innermost corner of my eye because that's where we get the most darkness. And I'm gonna let that sit and go back to it and blend it out soon. Go back and forth with your brush till you feel uh, you've zhushed things up to your liking. The perfect base is one where you blend it so well that you cannot tell when one product starts and the other stops. So. After you're done with all the application, blend your uh, your contour, blush and concealer so it all becomes really one and looks coherent. Now we're going to just fix the eyebrows ever so lightly. We don't have much time to do the complete IG brow or fluffy brow and we definitely don't have time to carve them out. So what I do in times where I, I'm, in a, I'm in a rush is I just brush them up and I have slightly different brow shapes. One is a bit more arched and one is a bit more straight. So I try to balance the both and um, I arch one which is straighter and I give a bit more of a straight brow to the one which is a bit more curved. And just go back in and fix anything you need, need a little fixing. And we're almost approaching the end. Now I'm going in with a bit of an inner corner highlight because that really pulls your look together. It looks so so awake so bright and it takes just the slightest amount just a doot doot, and you are good to go i'm going in with a bit of the contour palette just to set in the the cream contour and now going in with the lips since we have so much drama going on in the eyes we don't want to overdo and overpower so i'm going in with a very nice pinky nude it's a little bit more pink in the video but in person it looks very natural and it looks very baby pink and since the eyes are so uh, dark and sultry i find that um a glossy lip complements it so well and it looks so good together and who doesn't like a glossy lip and that's it just assess everything see what you need and you're good to go and that's all I completely forgot about the eyelashes. I'm just going to curl them a little bit because eye, eyelash curling really holds the work of the mascara and it makes your eye look so much more open. So just uh, press a couple of times, maybe two, three times on each and go on top with any of your beloved mascaras. I'm using the H&M Perfect Precision one. This is really nice. It gives you so much volume and uh, length and you don't have to build it up. Just one or two coats will do you perfectly. Et voila, that's the final look. Uh, this was really easy and fun to do and with practice you can really do this in 10 minutes and lesser and it's really 
really sultry and really uh, fun. I really enjoyed making this video and uh, I hope you will let me know how you liked it. If you did like the video, please give me a thumbs up and uh, comment down below what you'd like to see next because I have so many ideas. I'm frankly a bit lost. So help a sister out and that's it for today. I'll see you next time. Bye. So today we're going to do a super quack Going to do a super quick. <laughs> a super quick.